cord. <sighs> Some of you may have been able to watch the uh, sacral transmission short upgrade. Um, and, you know, as I was sitting with what, uh, what wants to come through in the evolution of these is it was so much, I know last week we talked about the divine feminine um, magnetism, and I'm curious, you know, if folks could feel as you played with that during the week, if you could feel the difference of when we create from this will place or more of an electric place versus the magnetism and, you know, what your experience was as that unfolded. And within any talk about magnetism, we also, um, if you're in a female body, um, are talking about the womb center as well. And so much um, can get stored and not just stored, but programmed. And, you know, these different hooks and these different also parts of self that all get in um, our womb center, our sacral center, and almost like bound like a net. And so this is where I see a lot of women tired, depleted, you're taking all the supplements, you're drinking red raspberry tea, you're, you know, doing all the things. And there's still like a deep depletion. And so much of that is um, just, you know, scanning the field of um, the community, this community, it's so it's like this bound, it can be this bound up um, sacral center. And that can be from I mean, anything from like what we are literally taking into our body. So um, the people that we are intimate with to um, the, the way that it comes through ancestral um, trauma. I mean, there's just, there's like the list is really kind of endless of what we can store in this um, sacred center and truly the holy vessel. And so if you haven't watched it, I would go back if you're feeling like you could use like a like oomph in your vitality, your creativity, um, and if you, you know, played with the energies of last week's like magnetism and it felt a little bit dull, then go back and, um, and we're going to go deeper, but you can go back and, um, watch that, uh, video. Um, and it's short, I think it's like 10 or 15 minutes, uh, to just really get in there and like move some energy. And then you'll have awareness, you'll have insight of, you know, what is, you know, what are the cobwebs I need to clear out? And, you know, it's, it's interesting, uh, just being an observing, like where we get in the emotions of like what's going on on the planet and, and all the different stories and programs and the smokes and mirrors. And, you know, it seems like each week there's another thing that comes out that, uh, for some group could raise fear of like, I'm not going to be able to travel or I'm going to be tracked another group is like, whoa, our freedoms and this, and if we're not going in this camp, or if we're not going in that camp, and it's a very skilled not an old story play about how to have uh, division and how to have um, an amplified duality. And so the way that we can really um, create our timelines and create from this place of consciousness that we choose is to radically and mindfully keep track of like what's going on in our energy field, you know, and, and to be able to catch it in that moment. Um, because it's so easy to get swept up into the emotions, the dramas, and also to think this is, you know, that this is new, that this is like a, a new story and a, a new paradigm of what's happening when, if we look at just, you know, the turn of the ages and so many different um, ways, this is, you know, it's, it's history repeats itself. And we also get to create something new at the same time. So there's this interesting paradox going on right now. And I've had a couple of people email me of, you know, how is it to live and to really be able to anchor in and create from that magnetic place um, and, and feel like miracles are happening there, you know, in my life and so many people I talk to is all of it, right? It's like, all of a sudden there's these awarenesses, there's, you know, awakening can happen so much quicker. It doesn't take me to take like, <clears throat> going through like all the different sufferings and all these things, like it can be a moment of wakeful that truly changes the pattern in the brain that helps to create a sustained awakened state of consciousness. And truly that is the way to make it through this time is we have to elevate our consciousness because it's not going to get easier on the external. 
it's not going to get simpler. It's not going to get like, oh, hunky dory. It's like, it's, it's going to continue because we are in that transition timeframe and we've all chosen to come and incarnate in this time. So it's like, how, how, do, how does one make it through? And how does one simultaneously feel the miracles, feel the expansion? And it's through that elevation of consciousness and linking it to the body. So not from a place of um, like the old paradigm of ascension out, but it's actually the awakened in. And it's a pretty radical path. It's definitely not one that's been um, really marked out in history. And so it's, you know, like, everything is also your pioneers on this moment as well. So in that um, vein of, you know, how miracle consciousness and how synchronicity and this moment of like the now moment, the present moment that opens up to where all of a sudden it's like everything is expanding. And then it's like, boom, you get on Instagram or you hear something in the news, you talk to a family member or a friend who's in a completely different reality. Right. And it's like, okay, how do we sit with that? How do we, how do we not just make peace with it, but how do we hold it? Because it's not about spiritual bypassing. It's not about ignoring the suffering, but how do we hold from this place of what is true and hold oneness consciousness, hold love and still be able to, um, to have awareness, to have prayer and sit with without judgment. And I think that's the key thing is it's like without judgment, right? It's like without judgment, whether someone's doing something or someone's not doing something. I mean, it is, it is wild, especially with the orchestration of social media these days or media in general is how to sit with like, that is their part of their path. That is a part of their path and you are living your path. So the importance of anchoring that vertical line that we've talked about is I cannot be understated. It's just, um, I was just speaking to someone who is a very skilled um, priestess and practitioner and um, knows the rituals, knows the different ceremonies and been through um, a lot of different programs I've offered and, and doing the things from a horizontal line. And there was this question of why is there no validity? Why is the synchronicity not happening? Because it's when we also get like ritual and ceremony is so potent to anchor in an intention to open up a gateway to allow different frequencies from the different dimensions to come all the way into this 3D. But when we forget that our first and foremost anchor is our vertical line and our connection to the divine, our connection to our own awakened self. And that's why, um, you know, in, in many different shamanic communities and many different um different paths that are more focused on the ritual, the ceremony. This is the lineage piece. This is all what we do. We're going to go talk to the Apu, the, the mountain first, or we're going to go do this ritual under the full moon. That's all really powerful. But if you don't have that constant evolution of your own soul awakening within your body, you're only going to see from that lens, right? So if you've been living at like the third story, and you're doing these rituals and you're doing the ceremonies, you're going to get a third story result back. You know what I mean? That's a bad analogy, but like think of a building. So like, and then you like, okay, I'm going to move up to the fifth story and you have this fifth story apartment and you're doing ritual and ceremony and little at this still, if you're not constantly coming back and this is so bad, like the penthouse as if the divine is the penthouse, but maybe the divine is the penthouse, but it's, you know, if you're not, keeping strengthening that central core pillar that is your own essence that no matter what is going on on the external you can source that light within you know how does someone like nelson mandela how do people that are confined into the most horrible conditions some people come out with an awakened spirit and transforms the consciousness of the world their field their consciousness has has pierced through and anchored the light of the divine within themselves as the divine. And how is it that some people have horrible, horrible, horrible conditions and come out and end up committing suicide or the generational trauma gets passed down? Like, what is that difference? And again, no judgment. Like we, we all are on our path and we're all doing the best we can. I really believe that, you know, but what is that difference? Um, and so as, you know, we move forward in this time period and, you know, the 
fear can get kicked up the, the manipulation, the blah, blah, blah. And also the, um, the divisiveness around people that normally could just sit in the room together, you know? And then it's like, I mean, it's legitly now, like, do you have a vaccine card to be able to come into this place? Like it's fucking huge. What's happening. It's like mind blowing really. Um, and yet it's like all been written on the walls for a long time. But anyway, so, but like, how does one, like, how are we going to, how are we going to navigate this time? <clears throat> so a little rant on that is that no matter where you're coming from to anchor back into that, that vertical line. Um, and it goes back to the magnet, um, the magnetism and it goes back to your womb center because especially <clears throat> if we are working in the heart and we're in third eye and like we're, we're developing this, but we haven't anchored it all the way in because that's the basement work, right? That's where so much of the trauma, so much of the doubt, so much of the fear gets stored in our first three centers, first, second, and third chakras, right? It's like, that is, that is the place, right? So when everything gets kicked up with the first fear that happens. It happens with our security, our, you know, what's happening on the, the primal brain level. That's the first center. And then we go, especially being in a female body, like what, what's the trauma, you know, like when we hear about the um, sex trafficking of children, like better believe that that second chakra is going to get lit the fuck up. Right. It's like, what is happening? you know, and, and lit up in a way that's like mixed between like warrior to like remembering trauma to, you know, there's so much that's going on energetically, which is why it's so like, I think I truly believe that the most radical and proactive thing that we can do is manage our own system. So we can come with a more clear space, a more clear presence. And instead of saying like, oh no, I don't want to get swallowed by this darkness. You come in with such strength light and you're like, how am I the prayer for this right now? How can I actually shift this consciousness? And we don't turn away with what's going on in the world, but we're able to come and like with clarity, with presence and know, and without a shadow of doubt, like we have our own sovereignty, we have our own agency, and that's where we're able to move within and without all these different places. Because it's not about just being separate from different shadows. It's not about being separate from all the shit that's going on. You know, it's like, it's like recharge, have your, your soul family, have your practices, and then just witness what happens when you bring love, when you bring prayer, when you bring consistent compassion to areas that the mind is like, I don't know how to wrap my head around this. I don't know how to have compassion for this. And you just let the mind do the thing. The self's going to do the thing all day long. Right. So it's like, oh, there's the self. I'm going to come back to what I know is true because you're here. You've come here for a reason. I'm sure all of you have had many lifetimes in, in this work. And now we're in the modern temple. We're in the modern mystery school. And it's, it's not about going away from the temple, but our life is the temple. I'm a little bit all over the place today. I feel pretty passionate about this. Um, so Yay, we're gonna go for it energetically. <laughs> oh, I love you too, yay. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna read this comment. It's, um, this is a singing and my magnetism has deepened and strengthened my voice instead of trying to put voice forth with force. Yes. It's like when we can really just, just stay, just stay. I mean, it's just like, we are so programmed and trained to not stay and not stay. Like when it comes to singing, when it comes to, you know, talking, when it comes to doing anything, you know, like how do we really stay and allow and allow for the grace and allow for the strength and allow for the power. And it's not about moving consciousness out there. You know, if you go through a whole day of it, I mean, it's just kind of like when you first sit down to meditate, when you're first learning to meditate and it's like, oh, you think you sit down and they're going to have no thoughts. Like I love when people are like, I can't meditate. I, my mind thinks. And I'm like, 
<laughs> welcome to the mind, <laughs> you know, and if you go through your day and asking yourself, where's your consciousness, how quickly, and it can get retrained, how quickly your consciousness jumps in front of your body. Like, where's that center seed of consciousness? And it goes, boop, boop. you know, especially now, like I was just looking, I was, where was I? Oh, everyone was like this. It's like our posture, right? So here's, this is not my phone, but like, you know, and it's just like, oh, it's like our, it's just like right plugged in. I actually did not have coffee this morning. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink caffeine, but I feel that it's just like every, I don't know if y'all have been feeling that lately, but the energy is so alive and like awake and it's just, that's pretty amplified. Yesterday I had to like work out like twice just to move the energy. I was like, I'm losing. I'm like, okay, body is getting stretched. All right. So we're going to go in. And work more with where your consciousness is at, where your center line is at, the magnetism, the sacral. I don't exactly know what's going to happen, but good things will happen. So we'll just <laughs> go in and see. A real buzz going on all the time. Yeah. It's really important to have a channel for where this energy is going, um, whether that's writing, exercise, your own passion, because that's when it can, if we leave this energy alone enough, like the buzzing, it can tip over into anxiety. It can tip over into anger because there's a very fine line between excitement and anger. You know, if we, if we just kind of have to track that, if you feel like you're just irritated all the time, um, track like where is your energy hooked into and where is that line like how can you channel it in a different way and it might actually feel like vitality but we might not be used to vitality so it's like it's really a study of how does energy and you in your own um, trained system interact with each other, especially if you felt depleted for so long, especially if you're not used to having a lot of energy, then you get energy and then it can feel like a jolt. And then you're like, you're pissed off or you're irritated or you're anxious. And so it's retraining, like how the energy can actually flow throughout your system. Yeah. High in energy anxiety. Yes. I think that that's, that's a theme right now from people I've talked to all over the world. And, um, Again, if we know, if we can harness it in a different way and anchor it deeper into our body, it actually becomes our power. So it's like actually the same exact stream of energy. But if you're tracking the part of self that's like anxious, and then there's a part of self that doesn't want to feel anxious. So then you have the manager part trying to like interact with that part and it's not flowing. So if you take that same frequency and like, let there be space, let there be space and anchor it deeper in, deeper in. It becomes immense creativity and power. Okay, this time we really will close our eyes. <clears throat> oh, so closing your eyes and just letting all of that high energy just breathe. Inhale, making some noise on the exhale. Ah. Ah. So keep going with that for a few rounds, letting some sound come out on the exhale, maybe shaking your body, moving your body. Wiggling the sit bones, wiggling the butt. Oh, yawning if it needs to happen, moving some energy. <clears throat> Mm. 
And just notice where your breath is at in its natural rhythm right now. And just with presence and awareness, saying hello to the inhale and the exhale. And then saying hello to the energy, that life force that animates all things that happens right before the inhale. So energy comes into the crown. What animates your breath? So saying hello to your life force today. Saying hello to source, creator, the divine, infinite oneness consciousness that's beyond all story, all names, that goes by many. And notice what happens when you simply acknowledge the divine higher power, higher source. Bringing awareness all the way to the base of your spine. easier, harder, the same, to feel that same divine presence, life force, energy, right down in your pelvic floor, the pelvic bowl. Keeping your awareness in the lower two centers, your base center and your sacral, your womb center. Letting the presence of your breath start to build on this lower Dantian, build on this energy center. Noticing the vibrancy, the presence With curiosity, just asking the question, just notice what happens with the answer, is how much agency, how much ownership do you have of this lower centers? 
this lower Dantian triangle. If you imagine the percentage written on a wall, what percentage would it be? You might just sense it, feel it, know it. the support of the light beings around you holding our circle with grace and light protection feeling your well ancestors the shining ones the awakened ones and just letting yourself relax still focusing on your lower centers Receiving the light of consciousness going all the way down to your belly, to your womb. Feeling the earth beneath you, earth mother, Pachamama. Gaia consciousness holding you, reflecting to you. Your power, your strength, your stability. Moving right into your womb center, your sacral center. If you're, if you have a hard time staying present in the center, you can uh, visualize in your field, your sacral, and then work to feel within. But if that's too much, you can just see what is your sacral center feel like? Allowing there to be a grounding core that goes right from your uterus, your womb. And that's even if you've had a hysterectomy, there's still the energetic pattern there. So from this energy place, feeling deep within the womb center, the spark of light, seed of creation, unique to you in your soul's incarnation. linking that to the heart of the earth so that earth star deep inside the belly of her
I'm asking in your field, especially in your lower center and your womb center, your base center, any energy to light up that is not yours. You might feel energy move up to the back of the heart or the throat. Really asking that the seed of it is in the womb center, the first chakra. So anything that is not yours from these two centers, light up. And allowing that energy to go down the grounding cord into the earth. Keep composting. Allowing the energy to come off the front side just as much as the back side. You might feel sensations, you might get images, or just a knowing, just witnessing what's happening. Right in the center of your womb, that lower Dantian area. Stating I in your full name. Summon myself to myself through all timelines, all lifetimes, all realities and dimensions. I am Emma. You might need to say it a few times, so just go with what your intuition says. Feeling your soul essence, the essence of the divine fill up this sacred holy space. Let that awareness drop. Just breathing back into your whole central column. Awareness of the energy coming in from the crown, going all the way down that shashumna, that central pillar of light in your spine. And the exhale, it comes back up. And notice where the edges of your aura are your biomagnetic field. 
like where is your energy field? What are the edges of it? Does it feel really close to your body? Does it feel far away? I'm asking it to come to the place that's going to be the most nourishing and the most empowering for you at this time. And going back <clears throat> to your lower centers, your womb center. And asking the question again and seeing if it's shifted of how much agency you have over these, your womb center and your first center. Just remember the percentage that was before and getting curious, like you feel more present, you occupy more space. And tuning in to your higher self, your soul, your Shakti life force and asking, what is one thing you can do this week? What is one thing that will nurture, expand, but also reclaim this energy center? And feeling into that vertical presence, your I am presence, the feminine Christ light within you, connection to source. And with gratitude in your presence, allowing that connection to strengthen. It runs all the way through your body, all the way out the top of your head to your upper centers. And coming back to your sacred heart. And feeling the flowering of your heart with your presence and your gratitude in front of the heart and the back of the heart. Feeling into all the lights, all the flowering of others' hearts on this call and elsewhere. And 
And this grid of light and remembering, of awakening, it's getting stronger and brighter, no matter what is projected on the outside and the external world and news and media. Can come come back to this truth, this feeling. asking if there's anything your heart needs in this moment. And trusting what comes. Giving thanks to yourself, to each other, to the light beings, your well ancestors for gathering with us. May each breath be an opportunity to come back to what is real. May every moment be an invitation to remember who we truly are. May all of our actions, words, and deeds be the good medicine for ourselves, our community, and our world. And so it is. Some deep breaths, relaxing back into this moment, moving your body around, letting your eyes take their time to open up to the external world. As always, stay internal and quiet as long as feels um, available and appropriate. I did want to mention a few things um, in this. Is when we went originally down to the basement, so to speak, the first few centers, um, the reason that immediately there was a call to um, actualize or invite in consciously your guides, your ancestors, even though before I get on the call, I do that for the group, but for your own psyche to know, because in the collective field, they're immediately, which is natural, and it happened of like, you know, there was a drawing up, is this safe? Is this safe? Is this safe? So if you felt, um, if that lights up for you as true, I would uh, practice going back in and, you know, whether it's listening to the recording or you can press pause or on your own, letting yourself relax and feel, truly feel supported and see what energies wants to move if um, um, a lot did, but there's still some to work with. Uh, because moving into deeper magnetism, 
and the divine feminine and moving into, you know, where's our consciousness. It's so natural to be able to feel an expanded state of being up here, but for full embodiment, we need to also bring it all the way down here as we know. So if that lights up for some of you, um, or is a yes, I would work with that, go back in and really see like what, what is there um, and take your time with it. Did you feel a difference between the agency before and after? Could you feel a shift like in percentage? Some head nods. You struggle tuning into the center today, likely because you're on day three of your cycle, a heavy cycle. Almost didn't attend. Yeah, so you, you know, see what comes up, especially if you're already clearing a lot, if you listen to it again, but in general, keep working with this center, these lower two that get really um, a activated by our world, especially if, you know, um, freedoms, you know, if we think about it, freedom, health, all of that is all getting like our lower centers are getting hit so much. And if we're not mindful, we take it in um, into our wombs and we take it in already as empathic people, but, um, there's, there's a real need to reclaim that place. So you also don't short circuit the more, um, consciousness opens up and the more you're able to sense the subtle realms and really walk between the worlds, you know, as, um, a medicine woman, as a priestess, as, a, a being that is awake in the world it can start to feel like short circuiting if we don't have full agency in these lower centers. Good, so um, oh good, the headache is gone, you shifted up 20%. So Iris, yes, this is your thing is you can connect to the angels and all that. And it really, um, it's, I would even say like drop that for a while and get like, where's the divine within your lower centers? Just cause I know that that's something I know you've been wanting to work with. Um, and when we tend to like let go and leave the body and have all these experience and we can feel the oneness and the love and the yay and the gratitude by leaving our body and um, but really what's like the time period of like, how can we hold that love, that gratitude when we're in form? And I get it, you know, like when I had seizures growing up and then when I was in a coma and came back, like the body feels so constricted. Like when you really feel into the expanse of who you are and the oneness and, um, what's available, it can feel so constricting, but there is such liberation that happens when we stay present within the body and in form. And, you know, it's like, we don't want to wait till we're at the end of this life, this breath, who knows when that is, whether we live to a long age or, you know, we pop out quick is, you know, what a gift it is to be informed, to have this practice. You know, so if it's easier to kind of pop out and just in general, I know that's a, a theme for folks that are drawn to meditations and, and channeling and all of that, uh, but we don't want to waste this, this um, incarnation of being in form because you're going to like, it's like, if you can think of it, it's just like a week out of a year. So if you spend most of the year, which is your like many times, like just being in the spirit realm and you have a week right? When you're on vacation, you're not going like, Ooh, I wish I was in like the other place the whole time. Right. It's like, how do you really like, um, use this time work with it as the gift that it is. And I get it. I spent most of my life, you know, like having access to these upper realms and back into oneness. And it was like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, it was such a struggle to not just come to peace, but aliveness. And it took like literally dying. Like it took going and having that choice point for me, you know, um, to come back. So I get it. It's like, and we don't want to, you don't have to wait that, you know, I think that was like the directive. You don't have to wait for something to just be like, no, this is a gift. And how do I feel that and wakeful and then the juiciness of it.
Beautiful. <clears throat> All right. I'm so glad everything's moving, more dancing, sexuality, nature, earth. You know, it really is. It's been, if you, know, if you do study the, the history of whether awakened cultures or mystery schools, it, it's a very, very programmed and intentional takeover of the patriarchy to separate the body and to separate the earth, right? To like have the celestial realms be kind of in this just such deeply patriarchal like program that that's a hierarchy. It, it's just, it's hard to even comprehend because we're so steeped in it. You know, so it's it's truly like opening up and the mystery schools and the the connection to these um, what we can seem higher dimensions or dimensional space can be accessed and they were born from the earth. You know, the ancient um, Egyptian technologies is so much connected to the earth. You think kind of the stars and the pyramids and the opening up to Orion and the Sirius connection, and that's very well known. But if you really go deep into it, it's, it's the body, which our body is actually the reflection of these temples that have access to this ancient technology, which is present day technology, future technology. It's through the earth. You know, the Nile represented the, um, the central column you know, the different centers and how they were placed. So it's, it's really um, when we can really also, um, it's a different way to decolonize in our psyche of these hierarchies of, you know, dimensional spaces even. It's like, it's, it's, it takes a minute. So, all right, loves, thank you for spending your time with me and um, I'll see you next week. Uh, there'll be another short, uh, transmission coming out. And what was I going to say? Oh, next week will be the um, coming out for the seven day for those who want to join. It's not going to be on YouTube. So um, it'll be an actual like program course, you'll have MP3s and things to do with it. Uh, it's really to anchor and, and like we've been slowly kind of opening up the system and anchoring the system. And this will be to really um, to just jump a timeline as we're going into a new phase um, astrologically and for this summer. So that'll be out and yeah. All right. Love you all and have a great week. <laughs>